a little bit more than you would have expected, both hovering around the 500 win rate. Well, let's see how they can play it out here today. Jumping into champion select, Vladimir and Gallio fanned out by C9, targeting towards that mid lane to start things off for us, while it's Gangplank and Alistair banned out by TSM. The respect ban going at Zazel. I'm surprised you haven't seen some of that in the LCS as well with Smoothie. I don't know what it, what <laughs> it is in the D9 man. Yeah, something's, something's in the water. Something's in the water over there that just makes you a beast at Alistar, giving him a lot of milk or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of milk in the fridge, man. Yeah. Strong bones. Nar, final ban on the side of Cloud9 Academy, targeting now towards that top side. So all solo lane focus from C9. And uh, we've seen some crazy stuff out of Shiro. He played a Kali last week into Camille and forced these really weird matchups. So he's someone who I think is starting to get a little bit more attention now. Uh, and so you see a lot of these bans kind of going up there. Hopefully, I would assume TSM is looking to get a more stable matchup. Uh, so they're not getting those kind of crazy things. But we'll have to see, because during the course of these bans, that leaves up Zoe. All right, Zoe is actually going to make it through this time because the final ban from TSM is Rise. We saw him banned away last game, see him banned away again this game, and behold my surprise, Mark. She's open and she's first picked. Zoe, wow. over to Cloud9. Wow. Uh, so Golden Glue has shown that he's pretty proficient on Rise and Azir, not as much on Zoe, so I can kind of see why they would leave this one up, but it's always a dangerous game to play. Uh, so we'll have to see if you know, Golden Glue is going to be able to go out there, hit all those crazy sleepy bubbles from through walls and all this crazy stuff. Or, as we've seen some players really struggle with those kind of elements and the paddle stars, you don't see them min maxing the distance quite right. Picked up first side on TSM Academy, Skarner. I was trying to talk for, so, for these I, guys. Nope, I'm not going to not notice it, Mark. This is, this is going to be talked about no matter what. And I hope, I hope, one, because I like to see Skarner kill Zoe, and two, just because it's a funny interaction. Z with Zoe yeah, ults forward yeah, yeah. and Skarner grabs her, she will actually go back to her starting point while still in the tail, and it makes this goofy slingshot with the crystal net. I really hope we get to show that off today, but Ezreal will be the second pick for TSM Academy. C9 responding with Camille and Sejuani for themselves. That's an interesting force there by C9 Academy, grabbing the Sejuani and then the Camille. Makes it so TSM can only grab one of their solo laners, and the other person is likely going to get double banned here. So they grab the Azir, a uh, great champion for Blaze Olive, so he's going to grab that one. But it puts extra pressure on Brandini now, because he's going to have to play against Camille, and you might see a couple bans come in to try and protect that pick. Let's see how they go about doing that. We've seen them favor banning the solo lanes in the first part of the draft. No reason to change it up now. Tristana, the first ban from TSM Academy, though, trying to keep some AD carry power away from Keith. C9 deciding to ban out Malphite. Ban out that top lane a little bit. Kind of exactly in line with what you were expecting there, Mark, in terms of where they're focusing. Maybe not the explicit champ we were expecting. Yeah, you sometimes see some uh, tank bans versus Camille. So Orin is one that, that you often see because he is actually decent into melee matchups and is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but the Malphite, I'm surprised that, I mean, you think that she has, Camille has good enough tools to trade against him. They trade your W for his Q, and you have the shield as well as a little bit extra sustain with your W. So you would think it would have been a fine matchup, but I guess C9 not wanting a part of that. Maybe more scared of it for comp reasons. With that Zoe, you want to deny some hard engage. Final ban on the side of TSM Academy is going to be the Zaya. Final ban from C9, the Poppy. So. Just as you said, they're going to focus whichever role TSM didn't pick. They didn't pick top, so they lose two top laners from their pool. TSM much more concerned with Keith's performance, keeping him away of a couple of the safer AD carries. Zaya with the ability to dodge away from everything with her ulti. Trist having two different forms of disengage with both her jump and her buster shot. TSM, what is it going to be now? Jax in the top lane. Skarner Master, do you put the Skarner top or the Jax top? You don't put Skarner anywhere besides the jungle because Skarner. too much of your stats are in Spires. You put Skarner top, all he does is sadly scuttle around really slow and press his Q. I didn't know if there was damage. some secret Camille no. matchup. I don't know. No, about. It's the secret Camille matchup is your screen's black and white for 15 <laughs> minutes and then you go into the next game. It's terrible. All right. It's actually the worst. <laughs> All right. I was I was double checking before I said for sure that Jax is top, but it's it's Jax thank, top. Thank Jax top. Thank you for the assurance. Uh, Keith with those bands <laughs> gonna end up on the Varus. Uh, he's had some really great performance on those hyper carry champions, and who, like you said, oftentimes benefit from having that little bit of extra safety. Keith is a player who, in the past, has had struggles with consistency in team fights and not getting blown up at the start of them. So those are two great champs for him. Absolutely. This time on the Varus. So. Uh, a nice answer, like, out of TSM Academy. And we talked about 
how the Varus, well, in last game we talked about how this champion needs some sort of protection, how he needs something to keep him safe. And yeah, you don't have the Tom Kench to gobble him up and get him out of danger this time, but you have the Zillion to say, it's okay if you're in danger, you can die at any point because you'll just come right back to life. So yeah. having that kind of an escape. It is a little sad to see the uh, little bit of a hyped up bot lane support matchup ending up on Zillion and Lulu. Mm -hmm. I was looking for some tank no playmakers, play, some roam, some some action happening on the map, but they instead opt for a little bit more of just a, a pushing focus. Both Lulu and Zillion can help with that kind of pushing. Ezreal struggles with it, so you can kind of see that. And uh, there's no tanks in the top lane either, so you can expect it to be a bloody game, Mark. You can, uh, if your vocal cords aren't <laughs> warmed up by game one, you'll have another chance here in game two, Captain Flowers. After we fought for three minutes straight in game one, I'm pretty sure that was a that was a solid warm up for us there. So. If game two is half as bloody as game number one, it's going to be a good time as we load into Summoner's Rift for the second time today. We are going to get to watch Skarner pick in the jungle. The Camille versus Jax, Bruiser versus Bruiser. Are either one of them relevant? Hashinshin would say no, but I'm going to say that they probably will be this game. Bottom lane, Ezreal versus Varus. The same matchup we got to see last time. So both of these AD carries, this goes back to our conversation about meta picks, right? Mm -hmm. If you're seeing a common matchup, if you're seeing champions who can go head to head a lot, this is one of the best ways to prove that you are one of the best players in this iteration of League of Legends is mastering those meta matches. Absolutely. A little bit swayed by the strange support pool, but uh, still worth seeing them on, on these kind of champs. And you have to think that C9 uh, Balin will be slightly favored here. Generally speaking, the Varus is a, a good matchup into the Ezreal. Um, and then Lulu is a strong laning pick. And I'm not 100% sure how it's going to go against... Uh, the Zillion, because so much of his power rests in his double bomb. So if Zazel is a competent Zillion, I think it would probably favor C9's bot lane. But if he's going to be struggling with the double bombs, maybe it is in favor of TSM. Well, like you said, Zazel's been the guy that always ends up in the conversation of fans saying, when does this guy go into the LCS, man? When are we going to see this guy moved up to the next, the next level of competition? People are hype about Zazel because the man has been playing so well so far. So if he starts chucking bombs randomly into the woods, I'm going to be surprised. Yeah, yeah, that would be a bit of a come down for him if that was the case. Uh, and he's a player that's been impressing for a little while now. Back on E United, there was the story of the three rookies. It was Licorice, Deftly, and Zazel, all three of them comboing together and actually being very impressive over the course of all last year. Uh, and then Deftly and Licorice end up in the LCS this split, no surprise. But Zazel finds himself the odd man out despite being one of the more impressive of the trio of rookies. I think a lot of people felt like maybe Licorice was the most obvious because top lane's a little bit easier to shine, but people were probably impressed with Zazel more than definitely in that bot lane. Uh, and yet, you know, uh, does not find as well in an LCS team and gets another split in Academy and is kind of dumpstering it. Well, that's exactly what we were talking about in game number one, right? This is your chance to not just show that you work well on a team, but let that individuality shine. Let your ability as a specific player stand out among everybody else around you. Academy isn't designed for fortune and fame and glory. This is a chance for up and coming talent to prove themselves and work their way towards those bigger stages where you compete for the fortune, the fame and the glory. And zazel has been making a good case for himself here so far. Brandini and Shiro getting into it early on here. One versus one at level two, but it's not gonna stay a fair fight for long. Brandini tries to get himself away. Wiggly continues after him. But a little bit of a miscommunication between him and his top laner, Shiro goes back and hits minions. So it will be flash for flash, but that's about all. Yeah, I felt like CNI could have got that flash for free, and if both double flash right away, they get the kill. But if only one does, there's not quite enough damage. So like you said, miscommunication there. Uh, and I got to say, I understand where Shiro's coming from. You can get the flash for free. One thing I want to comment on, because he's going towards it right now, Grig was moving towards that Skarner Spire in the enemy jungle. If your opponent pays attention, despite if they have any vision or anything near the Spire, as soon as you capture it, they will see it on their minimap. So Grig always has to be careful when capturing these Spires if he invades, because he may get found out. That will give his positioning away. Skarner always has to be aware of that. Oftentimes, it's a better decision not to take it. And there, Wiggly, though, Whoa, absolutely deleted the stun duration. Ever since they buffed that from one second to one and a half, that's what really put Skarner on the map, allowed him to start seeing play. And I don't know what Zazel was thinking there. You see the sleepy bubble come through the wall, incapacitate uh, Greg, put him to sleep for a little bit, and then Zazel just throws one of those little, I don't know what they are, screw The cog. The cog, yeah, he throws a cog and then wakes him up and gets his jungler killed. So a bit of a miscommunication there by Zazel. 
uh, early on. So there you see the sleep, gets put down, and then right away, Zazel wakes him up. Doesn't wait for the rest of his team to collapse, get in a closer position. Wiggly uh, has a nice cue to try and get away, but it is interrupted by uh, Grig, who flashed Grig had a nice him. flash to yeah. stop that. It was, it was a very heads-up play by him, and then he gets to uh, proc his own stun as well. So good first blood communication there off of a slight Cloud9 mistake. And if you're Grig, you know that Wiggly flashed topside because your, your top laner is telling you, okay, he flashed, he flashed, he flashed. So the only way out is the Arctic Assault. I really like the heads-up play from Grig there being the guy to just flash ahead of time because one thing that you're also seeing every game from these Skarner players is Summoner Spellbook. So your flash is on less of a cooldown than everybody else's flash. It's always okay to use it. Very good point. And off of that, big CS lead coming in for Grig as well. Stole away the rest of that bot side, or the, the Raptor camp, excuse me. So he's pretty well off early on. Looks like he's making his way up to the top side. Wants to influence this matchup now that Shiro has a small advantage. Grandini down to about half HP. If Shiro goes in, Griggs right there. Uh -oh. Shiro sees it and is like, nope, 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 nope. Skarner Fracture doesn't quite find its way onto Shiro. Barely misses him. But Grig just being there helped Brandini out a lot. You got to think he could have played that one a little bit uh, slower. He started making his way into landing phase. Shiro is clearly winning right now, and the wave was pushing towards him. So I thought he was going to sneak up to the furthest back brush there and just wait. But for some reason, he kind of hovered around the laning phase. Didn't feel like he wanted to commit to that. He has camps up on the top side and wanted to farm, I guess. And missed out on a kill opportunity there as a result. Brandini now doing just fine hanging out here in this lane. Has about the same percent HP as Shiro does. A bit more HP overall, considering he's got the Dorian Blade. His opponent has no health items in his inventory. But now Wiggly showing up. Are they really going to go for this dive here? A lot of CC being layered onto Brandini. Hextech ultimatum is issued. Brandini with the stopwatch to keep himself in a good way. As Grig shows back up here into the top side. Golden Glue, Paddle Star out. Not finding anything with it so far, but dive unsuccessful for Cloud9 Academy. Yeah, bit of a misplay there by uh, both uh, teams, all things considered. But it's hard to call an outplay when it was just Good by both. So obviously Cloud9 Academy starts the dive off. They start getting turret aggro. Shiro wants to trade off the aggro, so he drops the alt. But they end up too close to each other. So the double stun hits and gets both players. But then Brandini gets a little anxious with his stopwatch and pops it before either of them actually re-grab turret aggro. So they're able to walk away from that one despite getting double stunned under turret when they should have had turret aggro on them. So just a small, small mistake by Brandini there. Cost him a little bit. And look at TSM Academy's gold lead now as oh. Blaze Olive tries to make the play onto Golden Glue, going to be put to sleep instead. These guys, although they've only got one kill under their belts, they've got a one and a half thousand gold lead because they're farming really well for themselves. They've got a big advantage in gold in the jungle, a 1,000 gold lead just for Skarner up over Sejuani, considering he's the one who got the first blood. His opponent's the one who died. He lost his camps. And that kind of advantage is what you want to see on a champion. The one reason why Skarner was never in competitive play for the longest time, his early game was just so terrible. Before he had the ult, he wasn't even a champion. He was an extra melee minion. And now bottom side, it's Keith and Zazel forcing this 2v2 onto Mr. Rollis, taking him very low as TSM Academy will be forced off of that Ocean Drake. Sleepy Trouble Bubble comes out, not finding its way onto either mark here, as Golden Glue and Wiggly will take back the spot. Yeah, you saw a good Drake attempt out of TSM, but Zoe's notoriously hard to force objectives against. You see a skirmish on the top side. Shiro trying to respond to Brandini here, but unfortunately for him, he doesn't get any value out of that passive shield. Brandini doing a good job surviving the Camille early game, starting to retaliate now that he's had a chance to scale a bit with the Jax. Ultimate makes him much more ferocious in this 1v1. Yeah. Starting to go better for the Jax there. Um, and one thing worth noting, this is not when the cleanses work on getting rid of Drowsy and then you don't fall asleep, correct? Correct. I believe those changes are still not in the game. Okay. I wasn't quite sure if they were or not. It did look like an early cleanse by Ablaze Olive there. Oh, and then he fell asleep for a split second, and that's why he couldn't get the shuffle off. But then I remembered that patch change, and I wasn't sure if that was live yet or not. Right. I don't believe that that's available in this patch. Zazel and Keith. We were talking about how Zazel needed to be accurate with those bombs to survive in this lane, but right now he and Keith on the back foot heal. Used by Keith to keep himself safe and alive as the Ignite comes down from Shady there. So one summoner for one summoner. They have to get themselves out. Grig again in enemy territory. 
looking to maybe get something done here. Does have the flash ult available, a massive tool for Skarner. The difference between normal Skarner ult and flash ult, very noticeable. Flash Skarner ult, one of the biggest playmakers in the game, but Sejuani and Camille, no slouches either, but it's gonna be a full on two versus two. Grig trying to make something happen here. Here comes your Sejuani damage. The second part of the fail is enough to do it, but now can they get themselves away from Brandini? The Paddle Star comes in, not oh. quite finding its mark. Shiro still alive. Wiggly looking to get out now too. Paddle Star again, this time finding its way onto that TSM top laner. Gold Glue shows up in time to get him out alive as Grig gets turned into a purple lobster bisque. And sometime when all that was going on, Zazel actually died down the bot lane. Uh, not quite sure what happened down there. Hopefully we get a replay on that. But once again, Cloud9 getting kind of lucky. All things considered, that was a bit of a misplay by Shiro. Uh, dropped his ultimate too soon. He could have used that to box the Jax out and kind of allow them to isolate onto uh, Grig even better. But he uses it slightly too early. Brandini's able to get involved. And they end up almost losing that situation. But both get out with very, very low HP. Um, these are some scrappy fights in the top side. More and more fights. Every single time one of these guys gets a chance, they pull the trigger. Grig back up there, trying to go after it. He lands the stun. He's got the CC down. Shiro's really got nowhere to run on this one. They want to give the kill to Brandini, and they will do so. Good stuff from TSM. Punishing that teleport back in the lane. And that's so rough. You teleport back into a lane, immediately get killed again. You lose so much tempo from that one. Yeah, big, big problem, especially in these carry versus carry matchups where things can be so volatile. We've already seen how close these fights have been. C9 Academy going for the Ocean Drake. Trying to make this one work out. A Blaze Olive going to lose half his HP there to the Paddle Star, but it's Golden Glue who's also now in trouble. One more hit, maybe able to take the Olive down, and it will do that. Golden Glue getting the kill for himself, getting away, but now TSM Academy coming over the wall with the Arcane Shift. Mr. Rawless trying to make a play. Wiggly barely getting himself away, but not today. Mr. Rawless picks up a kill. Now going forward, looking for even more damage. Grig coming around the back side. Does have the ulti, doesn't have the flash. Paddle Star. I'm going to tell you right now, Mark, playing Skarner against Zoe is a special kind of hell. You literally <laughs> just get bubbled every time you try to move. It's incredibly difficult to have any agency in the game at all against that champion. So Grig's always got to be so mindful whenever Golden Blue's near. But it's all worth it when you get her off her ultimate, right? But it's all worth it if we can manage to see the Zoe Skarner ulti interaction. That's going to make the whole thing worse. Yeah, we'll have to see, though. TSM are going to be snowballing with this advantage. They do lose the Ocean Drake, but they win the fight, find a couple kills, and get the bot lane turret first as a result of this pressure. This is that kill that happened a little while ago while those topside shenanigans were going on. Zazel stayed in lane to try and deal with the wave and just a very easy dive. You see, I'm going to guess he did not quite have enough mana uh, for his ultimate there. Or maybe it was on cooldown, not quite sure. Either way, he drops, and then this is the fight that just occurred. C9 forced the, the uh, dragon. They are able to get it, and they're able to find a kill onto a Blaze Olive, who ended up just a little bit too far ahead of the rest of his team. But the side of Cloud9 was very split. People trapped in the pit. Everyone has to flash out. Mr. Rawlez shooting fish in a barrel with that Ezreal in the ideal situation. Gets Wiggly, and then the rest of Cloud9 is barely able to get their recalls off, but they lose their turret for it as well. Once again, the camera pans to top lane and the players are fighting. They will not stop, but Shiro seems to have lost control up here. Now that Brandini's Jax is level nine, he's got the Empower maxed out, so a very low cooldown on that. Phage plus Ninja Tabby's working towards that Trinity Force. It seems like Shiro's never on a side of a winning trade here. No, it's been in a, a, a bit of a difficult situation ever since that first blood disconnect that they tried to get in that top lane gank. And I think this is why people enjoy watching carry versus carry matchups so much more than tank versus tank. You just feel like the game is on a knife's edge the entire yeah. time. Any one of these small mistakes is so much more, more of an issue. Yeah, because, you know, a tank, no, a Maokai didn't W the Nar W quite right. It's like, all right, so he took an extra 100 damage. So what? But you look at these trades, and Shiro's almost going to die. Shiro really in some trouble there. Does manage to get himself out, but he's going home because if he stays at that much HP, Brandini can pretty much one hit him at that point. A Blaze Olive coming up the wall, looking for Zazel. We'll juggle him back, but the ulti comes through. Grig, drowsy now, looking for the pull onto Golden Glue, who hops, skips, and jumps away. Barely staying alive, but can he make it? Grig still looking to chase him down. Brandini grabbing the kill 
on to Shiro here too. Golden Glue wants to get out, body block it if you can. Wiggly, a double kill still there for Brandini as Wiggly tries to get himself out. Shady coming in to slow him down. He'll be the one tanking the turret aggro here at the start. Brandini going deeper, they find the kill and that is TSM Academy getting themselves yet another pickup. Yeah, spot nine, able to find the turret in the bot lane as a result. Well, that is a very minor consolation prize for the disaster that just took place in the top lane. They're going to grab this top turret and they're going to snowball up to about a 5,000 gold lead. Also grabbing the mid lane one. Really nice play by TSM. They have so many ways of finding different targets. A Blaze Olive is going to insect Zazel in at the start of this fight. It forces the ultimate out of him, but then Grig just picks a new target to look for. He's gonna get the flash ult on Golden Glue instead. So there's Zazel getting popped in. A Blaze Olive is now behind the team, and that's exactly where Golden Glue's trying to kite to. They have to kind of give Zazel up, but they're running up to their only safe point, which is a top turret, which guess what? Shiro's getting soloed underneath it already, so there's no safe place on the map for them to go. They end up all three of them going down. It's a four pro up there. And you talked, Mark, about how TSM Academy sort of mirroring what TSM's LCS squad looks like with a lot of incredibly talented players on the roster, but the results have been very much middle of the pack for them so far. But this is the kind of showing that you would expect from the names of the players that you see on this team. This is the kind of showing the TSM Academy wants to put on if they want to be one of those four teams going to play. And I got to say, I really like their draft and what they ended up with here. I mean, you get Golden Glue off a couple of his priority picks. They reach for the Zoe, despite that not really being what he's known for in particular, as opposed to something like that Azir. A Blaze all of Azir is no joke either. So you get that going for you. Zazel's off his roaming playmaking pick. He doesn't get the Alistar. Ends up onto the, the Zillion, which has not looked that impressive, all things considered. Uh, and then you get the top lane counter pick, and, and Brandini's performing great on that. So just overall, really like what I saw of the draft here for TSM Academy. And specifically about that Zoe, it's one of those things that you sometimes see with a champion that's almost always banned, and sometimes a team will leave it open. Essentially, as a, I double dare you to pick this. I don't think it's going to work for you or your team, so I'm daring you to yep. pick it by leaving it open, because if you don't, I will. And I love seeing those kinds of mind games being played by teams in draft. I remember at the start of last year when Camille, Ringar, and LeBlanc were the unholy trinity. That would happen sometimes. But now, Grandini putting himself in a real dangerous spot, trying to escape now from what has become a four versus one. He's already drowsy. He's going to take a hell of a nap. Shut down by Shiro. That's going to be some money in his pocket. Really needed it, too. Down 40 CS, down three kills. Grig picks himself up the eye of the Herald. We'll have to see if they can get a good use out of that one. There was a not so great use out of it in game number <laughs> one from Optics. So let's see if TSM Academy can get a better pull on that this time. And it looks like they will here as Shelly rears up the charge. No damage on her before that charge means she's going to hit the turret for about 45% of its health. A couple more big auto attacks take it down. And nice footwork there out of Mr. Rollos as well. Sidestepping Sleepy Bubble and the Varus Q. Adding the extra damage needed with Shelly to finish off that top turret. Trading the kill on Brandini up for an actual objective. Not bad. TSM continue to have their lead. They got that lead. They've got the jacks with split push priority. I mean, compare those items, Mark. It's oh, yeah. Tiamat, Ninja Tabby, two pieces of Trinity Force versus Tiamat, Ninja Tabby, full Trinity Force. That's not even close. Yeah, it's one of those times where you're both building the same items, you're both carries, and one of you is just way ahead on the power curve as well as uh, being a pretty good matchup. So Grandini is in a great spot to completely take over this game. Yeah, it feels really difficult from Shiro's point of view to be in that spot as Grig and Blaze Olive take down Ocean Drake number two this game. It's the first one going to their side, so it's ocean to ocean in terms of that Drake count. Four turrets to one, though. If you're looking at team objectives, TSM Academy up substantially, and that's where a big chunk of that 6,000 gold lead is coming from. That's how this team has gotten themselves ahead. We talked in game number one about how these guys are killing each other, but what are they killing each other for? There's no objectives. Yeah. TSM Academy have picked up quite a lot. And it's been very impressive how, how they've done it too. Uh, all those fights feeling like they've come off of good decisions. Even that first blood that was, the enemy jungle doesn't have a flash. He went for an early gank on the top side. We're gonna invade his red buff as a team. And, and make plays around that. We're talking about Golden Glue, Zoe, um, not being super impressive, but to be fair to him, a lot of things went wrong in this game well before it was really up to him. Uh, top lane, the dive's not working out. 
we saw Shiro and Wiggly just not on the same page off of what were all things considered decent plays. And then that bot lane, the dive happening, Zazel dying underneath his own turret. Things kind of just got away from Cloud9 Academy regardless of that Zoe pick. And now they've gotten to deal with a TSM Academy team that's up a significant amount of gold, that's up a significant amount of tempo, and honestly just has control over the map. The Zier turrets being summoned on the Cloud9 Academy turret ruins. You can see wards being placed down by TSM Academy in the enemy jungle as Cloud9 wards up their own territory explicitly. They're not warding in the river. They're not warding in the enemy jungle. They're just warding their own jungle because they know it's TSM who's going to be on the aggressive. Mr. Rawls, though, eating a trouble bubble, loses about two-thirds of his health there. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that's the one scary thing about this is, you know, Golden Glue has done a good job farming up highest CS in the game. So despite his team being massively behind, he is on a champion that can kind of take over the game despite what's going on. You find the right angle onto TSM Academy's carries and maybe even their support, Shady, and so much any of the less tanky members, and you can one-shot them, you start getting vision control back, maybe you can start sieging. There are ways back in the game, but it's mostly on Golden Blue. Grandini half-healthing Shiro there from a quick Jax burst. The stun interrupting the escape with the hook shot. As TSM Academy decides to start up that Baron. They're saying, look, if you want to stop Brandini from doing his thing, you're going to have to commit more than just Shiro. But if you do that, we're going to grab the Baron for ourselves. Nobody from Cloud9 anywhere near this one. Shady just hanging around to run interference. Brandini barely left alive. Golden Blue comes in, picks him up, but a Jax is hardly a price to pay when you walk away with Baron buff and the other four members. Good punish by TSM there. They're going to sneak the Baron anyways with how much pressure they had down the bot side. They know someone had to go down there. If anyone shows on their wards, then Brandini knows he's fine. Got a little over aggressive. Would have liked to see him focus more on the objective play because now you do not have a Baron buff on that split pushing Jack. Yeah. Very unfortunate. That feels a little bad. Yeah, did not need to go for that solo kill. Kind of got outplayed. Uh, flashed late. Wasn't get, able to get a stun on top of Shiro, who then was able to get back under his turret. But all things considered, still a good map play by TSM Academy. And now that they've got that good map play, let's see what they do with it. You've got Baron buff for three minutes on four out of five of your guys. What can you do with that? Considering you've already got four turrets down, that's two turrets left standing outside the enemy base for you to take. That's just free money at this point. But you've got to be so careful, like you said, Mark, of those sleepy trouble bubbles. Even when you're Barroned up, even when you're 7,000 gold ahead, Zoe can still find those picks out of nowhere, grab what's seemingly an impossible opportunity out of thin air just because of the nature of walking into this champion without perfect vision. Absolutely, but with that Baron buff, it is a lot harder for the side of Cloud9 to wave clear, so they should be able to kind of force these waves in and start sieging up. Uh, looks like they're playing it a little slow, fighting for vision control first. They want to see who's going to go answer the Jacks because they saw the Camille down the bot lane. So just holding off, don't want to get engaged on in the 5v5. Dead Man's Plate also now up on Grig is a big engage mechanism for him because of the fact it allows him to catch up to these targets, grab him with the pull Brandini. Trying to escape now for the two versus one. Golden Blue and Shiro fighting up against him. That minion, a hero, blocking the paddle star. Brandini just trying to bob and weave and dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge, but it's not enough, and now he's dead. It's TSM Academy's remaining member is going to use that Baron buff, pushing in the bottom part of the map, taking down one of those remaining tier twos. So again, you trade the Jax for an objective. Yeah, but once again, it does not feel like it was quite executed cleanly by the side of TSM there. Uh, as you can see once again, the Zoe being a bit of a nuisance. They didn't. We, we saw prior to that kill coming in, they were not pressuring the bot side very hard with their four-man core. They were content to kind of let the minion waves get cleared. And when you do that, you allow the rotation to come up from the Zoe in order to find that kill and get back to the mid lane in time. They do lose the bot lane turret, um, but you see, once again, Cloud9 are able to answer the mid lane once. So now you're getting into this objective trade situation as Greg gets chunked out. You're getting into an objective trade situation when you really just should have pressure in all three lanes just slightly too lax with, with how aggressively they were pushing in Cloud9. Despite the fact that it may not have been the cleanest possible execution, TSM Academy still manages to get themselves those remaining two turrets outside of the Cloud9 base with the power of that Baron they secured for themselves. Puts them to about a 7,000 gold lead. 
Want to go ahead and note that Grig did use a different page in the Summoner Spellbook to switch over to the Cleanse instead of Smite after they got the Baron. He realized there wasn't really any objective he needed to secure, so he wanted to have the Cleanse in case he got trapped by a Lethal Bubble or maybe a Sejuani Ultimate. But now TSM Academy with a little bit of time left on that Baron buff. Mountain Drake just now spawning. They got plenty of wards in the bottom side of the enemy jungle. It's likely where they're going to head. No Smite, though. No Smite. Probably going to be pretty safe, though. No Ezreal to steal this one away on the enemy team. And hey, you doubt Wiggly's going to go over the wall. Not going to be a repeat of the clutch gaming games that we are seeing. All right, Mr. Rollins and Blaze Olive and Shady. Look grab that one pretty easily for themselves. It's a two Drake to one count overall now. Next Drake spawning slightly after 30 minutes, which means it will be the last Drake of the game that's not an Elder, and it will be the final Ocean, so a little bit of extra regen, but nothing super pressing that teams are gonna throw themselves into an unwinnable fight for is now. Whoa. It's a Blaze Olive going in. Sharima shuffling Keith right back into his own team, and that is a big pick. TSM Academy now have themselves a five versus four. Enemy AD carry down for 35 seconds. Nice pick off there by Blaze Olive. I thought they are gonna take it slow, wait for the Baron before working on these inhibitor turrets, but he sees an opportunity to go. Takes down the enemy AD carry. There are trying to push around this mid lane. Still some wave clear coming in for Zoe now that the minions don't take decreased magic damage. And Camille just keeps splitting. So a little surprising to see Brandini not go up there to deal with her, but they are going to break this inhibitor turret. Inhibitor turret going down in 25 minutes is a pretty good time to break that line of the enemy base. This is often one of the stall out points when you see teams struggle to get through. TSM Academy knocking that turret down means now they have an open objective. Down to one quarter HP, Ooh. Mr. Rawls. Not quite going to be caught out by that ulti. Thanks to the Mikhail's Crucible from his support. A couple more hits onto this inhib. TSM Academy really want it. They're willing to commit for this and they'll grab it. Skarner goes to sleep, loses about half his HP there. Going to be rooted up, gets himself back away thanks to the cleanse. There's that Summoner Spellbook we talked about earlier coming up pretty big. Drowsy onto the Azir, but he does get himself away in time, buffering that out before the sleep actually hits. And TSM Academy get themselves away. Yeah, Golden Glue uh, finding a lot of bubbles here. Found one onto Mr. Rawls, but it uses Alt to find it, so he could not get re uh, in the, the range again to get the Paddle Star down. Chunks out Greg, finds another one to a Blaze Olive. He's playing pretty well, all things considered. And you can see why teams give Zoe so much respect here, but the rest of the team just too far behind to really follow up on the chunk outs in the CC. If, if they're a little bit closer in gold, maybe then Wiggly can really go in, but not quite able to do so. The cleanse by Grig after getting chunked out keeps him safe from Keith's ultimate. And you see why it's so hard these days to keep track of everything that's going on with the unsealed spellbook. There's so many extra components to worry about, whereas before, so yeah, he has Smite, and now he just can check for QSS or something, and now it's like, oh wait, he's got cleanse, and Things just keep moving around. There's a lot of elements that you've got to always be looking at, always be considering. Right? Mental notes everywhere. Yep. Mental notes have to be taken. Got to be a studious practitioner of League of Legends these days if you want to be successful here in the 2018 season. As TSM Academy, 15 seconds before Baron spawns again. Last time it was real kind to him. We'll have to see if it will be again here. Greg on the front line. You can see likely working on that Warmogs for himself next. Got the Spectral Cow to give a little bit of base magic resistance, so Zoe's flat penetration isn't just absolutely wrecking him, but likely will be going for the War Mogs next just to make sure that those big Paddle Star pokes don't take him out of the next big fight that could erupt there. Golden Glue trying to go forward. The Drowsy down onto the enemy AD carry. Golden Glue getting himself back, popping the Ghost to do so. A little scary there by Golden Glue. Oh, yeah. And surprise, Cloud9 didn't really pull the trigger on that side flank that they had. They, they got good vision control of the river. They snuck in there, and Cloud9... I think was unseen. Shiro and Wiggly were off on the side and maybe could have gone on to Mr. Rawls. Didn't pull the trigger. Jax pulled pressure down. Then they chunk out Golden Glue. So it kind of allows TSM to go for this free Baron. They're on the back foot. They're down about 10k gold. And that was maybe the best look on a flank team fight that they're going to find the rest of this game. You talk about unseen. That Baron went away in the dark. TSM Academy now two for two on the Barons. That one uncontested. Like you said, 9,000 gold up. One enemy inhibitor already down. The Jax has the Baron buff this time. Oh, yeah. TSM Academy is poised to end this game off of this Baron push. The game is five to nine, but when you consider the turrets, when you consider the drakes, when you consider 
the farm and just the tempo in this game. TSM running away with it. Oh yeah, and now with not needing to worry about that mid lane, gonna be generating its own pressure. It's much easier to execute that 4-1 that they were struggling with a little bit that allowed Brandini to get picked off a couple of times. Then moving down to that bot lane, Brandini grabs the red buff for himself as well before he moves up to that top lane. He's got the GA as well. A little surprised to see that one, given that the times that he's been killed, it hasn't been like, oh man, if I was alive for another three seconds, three seconds yeah, my team backs me up. So may maybe not quite the best choice given how the game has been playing out, but uh, if he does have to get into a team fight, it can be pretty nice for Jax to be able to go in there and be a little braver. I mean, maybe he's planning on the next big team fight being the last fight in the game, do a 5v5 in the enemy base over one of these remaining inhibitors. I have to see if it all plays out that way. TSM Academy setting up shop here in the bottom lane with that four-man core. Brandini pushing up the top side, staying in range to keep those melee minions enchanted. Make it a real pain in the butt to clear those away for Shiro. As the rest of TSM Academy is putting those little chips of damage into that inhibitor turret itself. A Blaze Olive has the Banshee's Veil, so he can't just be randomly hit with a Sleepy Trouble Bubble and get himself into some Sleepy Trouble. Cloud9 will be looking to pop that one if they can, but it's going to be easier said than done. The push continues. The next wave is here. Grig frontlining for his team, blocking the damage from this poke. Absorbs plenty of it for himself. The Drowsy down onto the Azira. Blaze Olive oh. going to be hit with multiple CCs, but it's the pull from Grig that's going to end up bringing the Sejuani into a spot where he needs that ulti from Zillion. Now with that down, TSM can look to make some real meaningful plays. Grandini brought low, needs one more hit onto the turret, does do it now. Trying to outplay Shiro, there your Guardian Angel's gonna proc Shiro, taken nearly down, but close only counts in horseshoes. My friend, we are playing League of Legends. Grandini getting himself back as TSM Academy pushing up that bottom lane. Inhibitor turret number two down, inhibitor number two. That's where we're going to set our sights, says TSM. Get it down below half HP. Inhibitor has respawned in the mid lane. Jax is forced off of the top lane, the pressure only staying bottom now. Grandini gets back, TP is gonna be used here in just a moment. One final auto attack from Mr. Rawless. Takes down that inhib bottom side. TSM Academy, one inhibitor down, two inhibitors exposed. The gold lead now hitting that five digit mark. Woo, touch and go there for a second. Grandini lost his GA, but is able to stay alive afterwards. So clearly that investment paid off. Really, really close 1v1. The Camille Q coming through just in time to finish off Brandini. Gets the shield as well to keep her alive. And Camille gets out just barely, so end up with nobody dying. Uh, but TSM did grab that bot lane inhibitor. They also cracked the inhibitor turret in the top side. So reset, take a minute. Probably gonna group up as five here. Maybe they can be still pushing, but they just need to take those next two inhibitors. And then they'll have the double super creep spawning in every lane. It'll be much easier to end this game for them. As uh, Mr. Rawlis, despite you know being a little bit uh, on the back foot this game, as Ezreal mostly focusing on shooting Qs out, has done a really good job of getting damage down these turrets. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest reasons you see games actually stall out is the AD carries don't feel super confident walking forward. But mm -hmm. Mr. Rawlis showing that he's ready to eat a CC. He's got his Mercurial Scimitar ready to go. He trusts Shady, who also. Uh, can cleanse some CC off him. So he has these tools to, to play aggressive, and he's done so, making sure that he's taking these objectives down. People get low, standing right in front of Wiggly to finish off that inhibitor. Very impressive game out of him, though. The scoreline and play in team fights hasn't exactly been eye popping. The difference between these two AD carries, I think, is pretty telling this game, because if you look at the farm, you, right. look at, you look at Keith, and it's like, oh man, yeah, he's out farming his opponent by 60s. Got a big farm advantage there. But when you look at the contribution to the game, 2-0 and 4 compared to 0-1 and 0, there's five kills that Cloud9 Academy have got for themselves. Keith hasn't been a part of any of them. Yeah, but unfortunately here, Brandini got seen on the red buff, stealing that one away. Oh no, Sleepy Trouble gets himself stunned up, but the Paddle Star still comes in. Brandini gets himself paddled. The Sejuani ulti just making sure of it as Shiro grabs himself a killing spree now. But that means Grig and the boys are up here in the base on that top side, working on inhibitor number three, number two, I believe, actually. Excuse me, I forgot the mid lane one respawned already. One inhibitor left to go, Mark. Grig and the boys grab the second one, but not gonna be able to get much else afterwards. Just kind of a consolation prize for Brandini getting dropped for the fourth time this game, third time in these kind of split push situations. 
Uh, it was nice to see how well TSM Academy played out the early game, but I think it's safe to say that without such a dominant early game, this 4-1 comp that they have would be struggling pretty heavily, uh, all things considered. I mean, this has been about an AK gold lead for the past 15-ish minutes, ever since they had that huge top lane skirmish that went in their favor. So uh, hasn't really been the cleanest execution out of them after a really nice early game. Right. The gold lead has been huge, but you've got to give it to Cloud9 Academy for, despite the fact that they're still playing from a massive deficit, it hasn't gotten more massive. Yeah, they've, they've lost some objectives to, to be able to do that. Right. They, they found pickoffs. They're dealing with the 4-1 as best they can. They often lose something on the flip side of the map when it happens. Uh, and they are in a lot of trouble, likely to lose this game, but both teams uh, have some talking points after this game, I'd say. Absolutely. TSM Academy, the ones that are getting the better of their opponents right now. Historically, TSM gets the better of all their rivals in rivalry matchups, but TSM now seeing if they can maybe grab the pick here onto that enemy top laner. Zillion Ulti comes down, the resurrection goes through, Drowsy on to Grig. Sharima Shuffle, Shiro goes down. TSM now looking to grab anything else they can. Keats already out of there too. It's a two for zero. Sleepy Trouble Bubble down onto Brandini. Golden Blue not willing to get in range, try to make the paddle star happen. TSM pushing onto that inhibitor in the mid lane. It's five versus three for the next 30 seconds or so. Wiggly going back, trying to clear out the minions, cut the wave. See if maybe there's some way to stall this push out, but TSM is gonna be having none of it today. Mid lane inhibitor under pressure. Top lane wave pushing in. They want to go for the Nexus here. Still 20 seconds on key. Yeah, who needs that mid lane? Good play, cut it, but they have the top lane as well. That one also has super creep, so TSM Academy is continuing pushing. Not enough wave clear here on the side of C9 to stop this at all. Game ending push, unless Cloud9 makes some kind of a miracle happen here. Brandini onto the turret, taking that one down. C9 trying to stop it, but Golden Blue falls. They're gonna lose everybody else, and that is all she wrote. TSM Academy taking the win over Cloud9. And a huge game for them, taking down what many feel is the top team in all of Academy, and doing so in a very convincing fashion kind of match them in their style with the counter pick top lane, getting a very carry focus style in that game. And then really great play on the bot side of the map as well with Grig having a huge performance on the Skarner pick, your favorite. Yep, Grig managed to have some awesome plays there on the Skarner. He got some good pulls and we talked about how Zazel was this big force as a support that a lot of people were talking about in Academy and Shady stepped up and was able to go toe to toe with him. They got some pressure early on in the bottom lane. Like you said, overall TSM Academy just played things really well. Yeah, I would love to see a similar uh, attack on the Cloud9 main roster, you know, give counter picks to someone else, make Licorice play a not so great matchup, take Smoothie off those roaming powerful supports and watch what happens. Maybe you get a similar result. Yeah, playing together as a team just seemed to work really well for TSM this time around. We got to see 13 minutes into the game, they got a three for zero near Baron, which really helped them set up that situation where they had the lead for so long. Right, and this was such a huge play. Everyone out of bot lane, despite no turrets really being down there, they kind of surprised Cloud9 in that way, who Zazel was also roaming. He gets Shreema shuffled back in. Golden Glue out of position. He gets ulted by Grig. And then because Brandini had been doing so well on the top side, he's able to get that solo kill underneath the turret. So Cloud9 thinks they're running to safety, just run into more trouble. That's going to be a 3 for 0. Keith down the bot lane, not really getting much done. Takes a turret for all of this, but that's all. And one of your criticisms throughout this game, Mark, was although TSM had a lead, they had themselves in a spot where it looked like they were in control for the majority of the game, it could have been cleaner. Yeah. Right? That was one of our big talking points. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you have a 4 1 and 0 Jax who's in this split push situation, and you're threatening Baron, probably should not end the game. Or I don't know if he ended the game, but he went to 4-4-0 four, four, and zero at some point as well. So he was starting to get picked off a little bit too much in those side lanes. Yeah, they did really well. There's always room to get better. But right now, to hear more about that victory, I'd like to welcome Ablaze Olive to the broadcast via Skype. Ablaze Olive, good to have you here. Congratulations on the win, buddy. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So speaking about that win, it was against Cloud9. I think a lot of people were hyping them up as one of the best teams here in Academy. How does it feel to kind of take them down for where they stood in the rankings as well as the big rivalry kind of between TSM and C9? Yeah, it feels really good to get the win over C9. Uh, the other top, the, they were all tied. The C9, FlyQuest, and TLA were all tied for first place, and we lost to the other two. So it feels really good to get a win on one of the top three teams, or in, in the standings at least. Um, and it also feels really good just to win, beat against C, beat C9 in game. Feels really amazing. 
All right, so you talk about beating C9. I want to talk specifically about your matchup that you had against Golden Glue because these days we see so many bans against Zoe, and you guys, you left it open. It gets first picked by Cloud9. What were your thoughts about approaching that? How comfortable were you squaring off against that champion? Uh, I'm really comfortable playing against Zoe. When she first got released, she was banned pretty much every game, and so it was really difficult getting practice with and against her. So... It was really hard, like, knowing how strong she was because she just never got through. But she's been released for, like, a month or two now, something like that, maybe even longer. I don't really know. But uh, we've had a lot of practice with and against her, and we had a really good strategy going in. So even though they, he got Zoe, we got a zero, which is a pretty even trade in my opinion. So I think we just had a really good strategy going in. I think the strategy was pretty apparent in how, how well thought out it was. You had the counter pick in the top lane, all this stuff going on, and you got a huge lead in the early game before it felt like things kind of were not executed super cleanly on the second half of that game. What's the communication like there with having this split push carry threat, trying to 1v1 and having him keep getting picked off? What was going on there? Well, the, communi the communication is uh, generally like trying to make sure that he doesn't get picked off because when the we're grouped as four at that point in the game, we're way stronger than their four. So pretty much the only play they have is to kill him. And we could have done it a lot cleaner, obviously, but we managed to at least trade towers and inhibitors whenever they were going down there. So while it wasn't perfect, it was definitely a lot better than some of our other games this split. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to watch. You guys had an awesome performance. Like you said, they were one of the top teams. It has to feel good to take them down. So once again, congratulations to, congratulations to you and the rest of TSM Academy. Here's looking forward to seeing more of you guys in the second half of the split. Thank you very much. All right, that's a wrap for game two here, but there's more Academy League coming up after the break. Up next, we're going to see Piglet debut on broadcast against FlyQuest Academy, so don't you touch that browser. We'll be right back. And oftentimes, it's a better decision not to take it. And there, Wiggly, though. Grig trying to make something happen here. Here comes your Sejuani damage. The second part of the fail is enough to do it. Brandini grabbing the kill. On to Shiro here too. Golden Glue wants to get out. Body block it if you can. Throws himself into an unwinnable fight for us now. Whoa. It's a Blaze Olive going in. Sharima shuffling Grandini onto the turret. Taking that one down. C9 trying to stop it. But Golden Glue falls. They're going to lose everybody else. And that is all she wrote. 